Hey Vic, welcome here to our channel and uh, it's great to have you helping us at the Hackathon 2021, Microsoft Hackathon and it's nice that we have worked together many years ago and now we're back here together, working together at Microsoft. How are Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Very good, very good. Thanks a lot, George, uh, for the opportunity. Uh, very uh, keen to uh, basically get in and uh, keen to learn and talk about uh, anything Kubernetes. So this is uh, part of the hackathon, as you said. Uh, we spend uh, the past few days basically uh, learning a lot. I learn a lot certainly uh, around um, around cluster API, uh, AKS, and Kubernetes in general. So look forward to uh, sharing it uh, with the community as part of the hackathon. Thank you. Thank you for helping. And we hacking like an open source project, then we can talk Indeed. that in public. It's just helping the community. That's a nice thing of of my job, I think. <laughs> and, Absolutely. Um, and let me share my screen here and and show what we're doing. And thank you for you know for your help, by the way, because you are helping a lot and we're discussing documentation and that's going for the community and we're helping so many people yeah absolutely but, cool no worries at all and uh again i i spend a lot of time as well uh in uh kind of understanding a little bit more about cluster api um i think this is one of the uh, i would say gems uh, hidden gems uh, in 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 kubernetes that may, maybe many not many people are aware of it so good to be able to surface it to everyone. That's true. That's true. Yeah, many people never saw that. That class API is that like control plane here on the on the top. There's like a a piece of software running normally runs on Kubernetes. Then you need a Kubernetes cluster to run this software. That pretty much is doing like a management of multiple clusters, the creation and the life cycle operation of those clusters. That's what we call target clusters or workload clusters. And yeah. we call these these management cluster. That's just like a normal Kubernetes cluster where we install cluster API. And yeah. for Azure specifically, we have one provider. For each cloud or for each technology on premise, they have different providers. Yeah. And we're going to talk more about the Azure provider here. That's Absolutely. what we, we hack in and help the product team to to improve the open source project. And one of the technology for Kubernetes that many people use is like Helm. Helm is like a package management for Kubernetes. Yeah. And everybody knows that Kubernetes like you deploy YAML files. Yeah, you have that long YAML file with a definition yeah. and that become complex. And Helm helps to put like a template language on top, but mm -hmm. not just a template language. You can also, uh, manage like release, installation, you know, re uninstall as well. Of those, what they call shards, that's like a group of templates. Yeah. And they use like what they call uh, Go Lang templates. Is a Go language template. Very template mm -hmm. like Jinja for Python or customize is like Helm use Go Lang template. And I think end of last year, our friend Alessandro that. Uh, is also on the hackathon with us. He wrote uh, like an article using Helm Shard with Class API. What I, everyone enjoy, I really enjoy when he did that. I yeah. played with that. And even better, he used Helm Shard for managed clusters. That's great. Because Class That's API really. can also create AKS clusters, not just what he calls self managed clusters using the end. And That's he said, absolutely. no. Yeah. What do you think? Like, yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, it's really, really awesome because um, I thought uh, class API uh, initially, I thought it was uh, just for self-managed or uh, bare metals, which uh, I guess some customers do have some requirements having their own sort of managed clusters, self-managed clusters. Uh, but now, if you do want to onboard AKS, it seems that you you can at least for uh, you know, uh, using using this um, this preview or experimental features at the moment, so that's that's available, which is fantastic. Exactly, and there are many. When I start presenting about Class API, you know, four or five months ago, 
everyone, the first question is, can we deploy AKS? Yeah. And AKS on Class API is still like experimental. Then we need help. We need help from the community. And if people start helping, the hackathon, we try to help as well. And if you if you go on the Class API release nodes, the last one is 053. You're going to find things like um, allow a specific API server profile or Azure Manage control plane. Anything that's the Azure Manage, that's AKS. Okay, it's a, yes. it's a managed class. And if you look okay. on the release, you're going to find control plane, load balancer profile. Now you can do it. That's crazy. When that's I, crazy. Alessandro wrote this blog, many of those things wasn't available. Then what are you trying to do at the hackathon is just update these. What I yeah, I did now, the first step of the updates of the hackathon, I I got his um GitHub. I did a fork. Great. Okay. And it's still on my name, George Arteiro, and and just a fork from him. And I started updating the the Helm shot. Because when he wrote that was the Alpha V3 version three. Mm -hmm. We are on Alpha version four, moving to you know to version one. That will be the first production ready version in the next couple of weeks. But they are very similar to version four, small changes. Yeah. And I said, why not to just make sure that's working as it is today, you know, fully updated, and then we can incorporate the new change that happened in the last six months. Yeah. Like any new feature, we can make the Helm shot more flexible. Using yeah. you know the normal values files from Helm Shot, passing parameters like you can see on my screen, you know multiple agent pools. Now you can set the mode of the agent pool, system or user mode wasn't available. You know when he did it, I just updated that. Yeah, you can set network plugin, network policy version, the SSH key that you're going to use. Then another nice thing that many people never use that when they create AKS is define the name of the resource group. They normally start yeah. with MC. Yeah. And this one you can you can you can pick your name. Then you don't have to use that MC name. Oh wow. That's, you can that's use... somehow more flexible, right? Yeah. Than, than if you do it in the in the portal or in the you know normal template creation. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's then, great. And to help a little bit, I update the instructions. Yeah. Read me file. I did some improvements just for the installation to make sure that anyone that never used that, you know, can give a go. Yeah, cool. I think I think it's probably a good idea to uh, highlight, um, you know, the uh, what you're going to sort of show to the community uh, today and. Um, you know, potentially like uh, from the basics, understand the basics of what this uh, classic API and this Azure provider, we talked about all, all the features uh, and highlight the process, what you're going to do, uh, what you're going to demo today um, and, and what would be kind of the capabilities that you can do now uh, versus uh, what you haven't been able to do uh, today, right? So let's go yeah. through that. Let's do a hands-on demo and see how it works. If yeah. you if you follow the, you know, the the class API book, there are instructions to use you know kind that's a local Kubernetes cluster on Docker. Yep. Um, and the similar way we're going to use kind. That's why you have have. The, what do you need to start? You need Docker desktop installed. Could be mm. Windows or Mac. Mm. You can have kind. That's just a command line. Quick installation here. Yep. Then cluster CTL the same. Get the latest version four, don't go for the version one because the, the Azure provider is not ready yet, it was just released last week, then it's too early for us. Yeah, it's introduced some sort of breaking changes I had, right? So yeah. It will be breaking change. We are working to release the version one for the Azure provider as well. Of course, then yeah. probably we're going to update this as well. But for now, let's use the version four. It will be alpha four. Yep. And you need cluster CTL, Helm, Kind, and Docker Desktop, Helm tree. I have done that already. I install all those things. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to clone that repo. At the mm -hmm. moment, you can get my fork. Excellent. But next few days, you're going to push back to, to Alessandro repo, do a pull request for him. Yep. And um, Alessandro, please accept the pull request. 
I've been dead to block. <laughs> and um, yeah, we can record with him later as well. He's joining, he's with us, but he's busy today. And then yeah, and again, it's uh, it's nothing that that's big of a change. It's more about just uh, adding some instructions for people to be able to follow that better, right? So yeah, exactly, exactly. And um, one thing I have here is, you know, to access Azure in the class API, they need like a service principle. Mm. I have a set principle on my bash RC file. Yep. Um, if you don't have it, I prefer to put those, you know, information inside my bash RC. But if you just created one right now, you just fill it up here, the field, the next port on your terminal. Yeah. On the bash RC, every time that you close and open the terminal, you'll be there. Exactly. Then yeah. you don't have to do all the time. We also need to source some, some environment variables that uh, we need for to use AKS at the moment because it's an experimental feature. And that file is nothing more than setting some environment variables and setting some specific um, you know, variables that you need for class API. Got it. And just do a source, a source command if you don't know, just to load those configurations on your terminal. Mm -hmm. And you when you close the terminal, it's going to disappear, you have to load again. Because yeah. it was just loading for that and, specific and session. And by the way, this is working on WSL, right? Or WSL2? Good question. Good question. I have <laughs> WSL2 installed on my Windows Excellent. 11. That's great. And that's Ubuntu 2004. Okay, then Ubuntu 2004, you'll be able to install all those things that you talk about. The oh, Docker sorry. desktop is running on Windows. Yeah. But Docker yeah. desktop now is installed inside WSL2. But we don't have to care because Docker organizes and installs everything for us. Yeah, and um, that's but we're news. not using Kubernetes cluster from Docker Desktop. We are using okay. something called Kine, and yeah. Kine, Kine, you need Docker Desktop to be running, and you can see that Docker Desktop is running here. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, then you go and get this command Kine, and you're going to create this cluster. Mm. Okay. Let me close a little bit here. You can probably set up. And quickly, they're going to use Docker. Okay, it's Kubernetes running inside Docker. Wow, and it's, it's going basic, yeah, it's basically like Kubernetes using Docker, yeah. Yep, very really lightweight Kubernetes. Yeah. And we are just creating a Kubernetes class locally. Brilliant. Okay. I have another uh, another Git repo, another presentation I did at React or Microsoft React that I'm using AKS as the managed cluster. Mm -hmm. But here we are just using a local kind cluster that's very easy to show and play and for you know to understand yeah so this is Once probably that good cluster scenario. Is running we're just going to create a secret yeah okay that's required by class api mm -hmm. we're going to initialize class api that's a command using the classes here command line and we also install on the initialization the azure provider and that's the version that's compatible with the alpha v4 that's yeah. 053. Awesome. Awesome. So that's the manage uh, provider that you mentioned. So Azure Manage uh, cluster that you mentioned there that, uh, that's being supported by K uh, Cluster API. Yeah, that, that uh, until here, that's just an initialization. Okay, mm. that's an initialization. Got it. And once we have this running, normally with you know Cluster API, if you go on the quick book, on the quick start of the mm -hmm. quick book, Mm -hmm. After you install the CTL, after you you run the same initialization that we have there, mm -hmm. you have to run a command to generate the YAML file. You have to run something like that that generates the YAML file. Mm -hmm. And you get like a YAML file. Got that's it. a definition of your cluster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are all the CRDs of Kubernetes, all the YAML file to do that. And then let's, we're going to get that, but we're not going to use the cluster CTL generate. We're going to use Helm SHA. That's the difference. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, Go so instruction here. Just, just quickly, in the meantime, yeah. just for us to us take some time. After mm -hmm. you create the cluster, you need to create the secret. Mm -hmm. Then go to create the secret here. Yeah. And you're going to run initialization. 
that's just getting the, the kind cluster that's running, and you're going to install the cluster API components yeah. required for us to manage all the clusters. Got it. Got okay. it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then let's take some time to install. Mm -hmm. So effectively, this um, uh, cluster CTL is, uh, you know, you can use cluster CTL to generate uh, YAML, which will be used by cluster CTL as well to be able to generate your or build your uh, cluster uh, in, in Azure. But this 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 approach effectively just changed that uh, using Helm, Helm chart. So what would be the benefit of using Helm chart as opposed to this? Yeah, that's a good question. Like Cluster CTL, like the Azure provider, we we have, let's go on the Azure provider here. Mm -hmm. We have templates, okay? That let's say that's similar to a Helm chart, but Helm yeah. chart's more than just a template. You can yeah. manage the deployment, okay? That's a different way to manage the deployments. Mm -hmm. And um and normally, once you generate the first template, after that, you don't need the templates from from Class API anymore. Oh, okay. Understand? Like, interesting. The, the Helm chart will be more like a dynamic template. Mm. But, yeah. You don't have to pick one template. It's just a single template. Yeah. With a bunch of if 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 is Windows include that nice. part yeah. here. If it's Linux, do that. If it's yeah. Active Directory integration. You know, there's an extra configuration included. Mm, mm. But yeah, you have you have templates on class API provided, but that's using customize. Mm -hmm. We have Helm Shot. We have the Helm Shots here on my on my, my VS code. Yes. And you can inside the templates folder, that's normally what how Helm Shot organizes the template. You can see the CRDs, the common CRDs for class API. Using version before now, this update I did yeah. on what Alessandro did before. Okay, that was very similar. Wasn't that much change, but was some testing required. Uh, we had to include the new cluster identity that's required by by Cluster API. Mm -hmm. And we create that um, you know Azure managed cluster that's pretty much AKS. Yeah. Okay. You can have managed cluster for the clouds, by the way, as well. And on the control plane of AKS, it'll be AKS control plane. Mm -hmm. You can set like network plugging, network policy, uh, SSH key, version. Nice. And the homework for us after this video is to go for the documentation and see what's coming, what's new that wasn't there when Alessandro did. Mm. I noticed there is a new feature to to include the new SKU, you know, if you want a SLA for the cluster, free or paid. Of course, of course, yeah. Um, there are Active Directory as well, some uh, configuration we can do, like for row based access control using Active Directory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then after this, let's mm -hmm. go update that. Let's, that's part of the hackathon. Let's keep updating yeah. and make sure that we have all the features that are available on the Helm chart. Yeah. But how Helm works, once you pass some parameters on those, what you call value files, it's nothing more like parameters. Yeah. Okay. Like that that the generate that you you ask for. We pass yes. the parameters here as well. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If, if you go on our repo, we're going yeah. to do exactly the same now that the cluster is running. As you can yeah. see, installation was done. And if I go cl cluster CTL get pods, okay, all the pods. Just to make sure that everything's really running. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's all running there. You can see the cluster API controller manager. That's the most yeah. important. There's yeah. the cap Z. Cap Z mean cap Z or cap Z is the the cluster API Azure provider. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're all running now. The cluster is ready with all the cap and cap Z components. Really? Now they're yeah. waiting for us to send like a YAML file with these configurations. Yeah, which yeah. you can use, which you can use cluster CTL or you can use uh, this Helm chart, right? Yeah, so. we bring something new. Normally people use, you know, cluster CTL generate. Yes. We're trying to innovate and say, 
not innovate because Alessandro did last. Alessandro did the innovation, but we now updating yeah. what he did and bring yeah. the new features. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah. so slightly, slightly. We're uh, promoting what you know, promo <laughs> promoting what he did. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah. And he, he when he did that, he he gave two ways. Okay, you can pass all the parameters here manually, yes. or you can yeah. load those parameters from YAML file. That's Let me because I have the YAML file here and updated. Yeah. I'm going just yeah. to run this using the YAML file. And I'm also passing some just extra parameters because I have these in as environment variables already, like yeah. secret and things that I don't want to put inside a value file because yes. like sensitive or like my, my SSH key, I don't want to save that <laughs> on my. <laughs> totally. And I'm also making sure yeah. that I set the namespace. Okay. Yeah. And let's go there and let's run this. Run that command. That's very quick because that's just a Helm shot. They mm -hmm. go Helm install, give a name, go yeah. cap Z1, passing the Helm shot folder and passing the values YAML file and the extra variables that I'm setting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Using that set set the command here. Mm -hmm. And this is these are required for you to be able to interact with Azure, right? So to be able to provision the actual resources in, in the portal. So you can actually see it in the portal as well. To see yeah, what's, what's we're going to doing. go back to the portal. But yeah. how Helm works? Now you do you do like a Helm list. You can see mm. that was deployed. Yeah. Was applied. What yeah. Helm does? Helm generates the 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 YAML file from the templates, from the shark, and then send that to Kubernetes as like a kubectl apply there. Yeah. And yeah. that's probably running now. If you look my configuration file, my values file, I'm creating a resource group called. AKS clusters. Mm -hmm. I'm creating another resource group, CapSet one for for the VMs for the resource of the cluster. Yes. And the cluster um, will be named CapSet one. Okay. okay. If you will Europe with a couple of node pools, system and user, one node each. Yeah. Let's go now on Azure Portal. Yeah. And again, those those parameters can be easily dynamically changed and um, passed in as part of the build or pipeline or something, Correct. something along those lines. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, you absolutely. customize your AKS one values file, YAML file. Yeah. And you do you can have one for each kind of environment development production. Yeah. UAT. And that's quick. Yeah. It's already creating here you you can, the network and the CAPZ one. That's that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. As you and know, this, AKS, you have that's just the cluster. Yeah. And there's another resource group for the for the VMs and the, all the, the Azure resource. Yeah. They're yeah. still in creating, but now you can see there a little bit more. Two node pools mm. using Kubernetes, nice. using Calico. Mm. Let's go on the node pools. Yeah, two node pools coming, still being uh, is already running, looks like. Let's look the nodes. Yeah. So this one here is really uh, building the machines. Right. The building machines, yep. Yeah. yeah. VMSS so yep, one twenty one two yeah. the version. See nice. our back uh, um is uh, is enabled, but the active directory is not. Yeah. Then that's that's probably the improvement we can make now. Yeah, and that is already supported at my understanding. Is that right? So in the latest version of the class API, it is. Yes, yeah. we can, yeah. we can, we can try to do that thing. Improvement. Yeah. I did the minimal yeah. improvement that was that mode for the node pools. Yeah. I just did the minimal just to make work with the yeah. latest version. But now we can bring all the new features to create more, you know, yeah. uh, customized clusters and more enterprise level clusters. With the, you know, all the features that we need, but yeah, the class has been created just to prove that it's been created, and not using that MC. There is a mm -hmm. resource group called CapZ One. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. you create a customized resource group name, <laughs> and that there you go. That's your class. A little balancer, manage identity. Yeah. Normal AKS cluster. Yeah, 
Yeah, so so you can actually modify the name of that resource group. So that's usually usually a lot of questions coming out the uh, the folks uh, when building AKS. They ha actually have to follow some sort of naming convention, and they they unable to uh, to to modify that. Yeah, you can you can modify if you want. Excellent. Um, yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah, what, what's that to be running here? You you be able to just. If you go back to your Helm chart now, mm -hmm. and you say that you want to two nodes here, mm -hmm. and you, yeah, I haven't I haven't tested that yet, and I think it's going to fail because it's something mm -hmm. you have to, to improve. So is this the GitOps that yeah. you're talking about? Something to do with that? Is it? It's kind. Of, it will be kind of a GitOps. Yeah, and the okay. nice thing of management cluster is one thing of the class API. Mm -hmm. If you create that using um, Bicep or using Azure CLI or mm -hmm. App Template, there is nothing that will be monitoring the state of the cluster. Right. Different from class API. If you go on, on, on the Azure port and you delete this AKS cluster, okay, class API is going to, they are going to create again. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. That's really. I, it's, it's I was like, it's almost like the deployment of uh, pods or something like that, where you deleted pods and then you got deployments. He's just going to redeploy. Yeah, just like that. So this you is, have to make sure bring that. It to the, yeah. <laughs> and, well, and that's why I pre you have to make sure that you the deletion is not working perfectly yet. There's some work for us. It looks like he is not our problem here on the chart. Yeah. Is some you know things that have to be improved, but once you have to make sure that you delete the helm, the the helm release, yeah, that release here. Otherwise, they're going to keep creating again. <laughs> and earlier I was playing and I just delete the resource group and I forgot to delete here. And yeah. then when I came back, everything was back. <laughs> like <laughs> well, five it means it, was, it, it works by design, by the way, George. That works by design. <laughs> it's kind of a. Yeah, then good. class API itself is kind of a GitOps, okay? But yeah. GitOps is more than that because we apply new configurations. Right. But the configuration that's there on the management cluster, the CRDs, mm. they are always trying to reconciliate, and then, nice. and then if you change something, they're going to maintain. Got that's it. the nice thing. It's like yeah. Terraform or something that you can run yeah. every hour just to make sure that the state are you know there. Yeah, yeah, maintain and, uh, the state of that, and then maintain someone, the state. Yeah, yeah, and then that's for self-managed clusters as well. It's it's pretty that's pretty great. handy, and mm. very handy, very handy. But that's pretty much what I have to you know to show. You can you can create other classes. You can change configuration. Yeah, and um, doesn't that's take long to create a case cluster. I would say already in updating should be ready very soon. Mm -hmm. Wasn't faster because I use the cheapest. <laughs> VMs, uh, you know the you know one of those uh, burst bursting VMs, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> leftovers. <laughs> if you use like a normal DVM, it'll be pretty fast. It'll be like three yeah. four minutes. It'll be it'll be up and running. Yeah. I'm just using that, you know, BVM. That of course, of course, yeah, that's yeah. great. I mean, it's it's great for testing. It's great for especially the client client cluster. You know, uh, uh, being able to create that uh, AKS on your local machine somewhat and then test that out. That's brilliant. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, go here. Follow the you know, follow the steps. Yeah. Try to understand if you wanna. I'll be doing a pull request for Alessandro, but let's keep improving that. Yeah. Even after the hackathon, and let's keep improving, bringing the latest resource, and make sure that um, you know everything. You can be do a second release, and everything is working. Still some work in progress there, but it's yeah. operational. You can see you can create classes. That's a good yeah. first step. Absolutely. Then, Tick yeah. the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, you will we'll be posting any further information about all the links and everything else uh, in uh, in the video, just to make sure that everyone can uh, come in and look at it. Yeah, I'll be posting, and if you wanna support us and support new people like Vicky joining us, yeah. subscribe the channel, hit the <laughs> the ringy bell for notifications, and then we talk soon. Thanks, Vic. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure, mate. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, George. Yeah, great time. And let's organize a Azure Hackathon sometime. 
then it'd be amazing with all open source projects that we are supporting now. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Bye.